be repealed. And indeed, there is a need for that act to be repealed. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am so saddened that this happened. But like I said, we have all come from him, God, and to him we shall all return, whether you like it or not. I will just ask that the good Lord have mercy on his soul and give him a resting place. And to his family, I share my condolences with them. I know what they are going through, but the good Lord is there for them. On this note, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity. Honorable Carlos Ainka. Shamoa, you'll be the last person to speak on him, so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm grateful for the opportunity to say a few words about our colleague, Honorable Atupon Ford. A gentleman, gentleman that I've known many years, even before politics. Someone who has carried himself so well when it comes to entrepreneurship and of course an industrial person who has led the AGI for many years to what we see it to be today. The speaker, Honorable Pam, uh, came into this house during the seventh parliament and he was able to prove to all and sundry, especially people from his constituency, that he was a gentleman that was ready to provide proper service to this country. Indeed, in the seventh parliament, he was the vice chairman of the Trade, Industry and Tourism Committee. But even though he was the vice chairman, he actually acted as the chairman of the committee because the chairman of that committee, which is Namafo, saw so much progress in him that he actually let, allowed him to lead the committee uh, any which way that he desired. And I'm sure if you listen to what my colleague on the other side just said, they have so much confidence in this gentleman that one cannot run down or downplay his contribution to that committee as far as uh, the seventh parliament is concerned. As you can decide that this gentleman was also the chairman for the MBSSI board, it was during his time that he managed to get MasterCard which is today helping us with our youth start program and all other projects that he actually championed whilst he was the uh, board chairman for MBSSI uh, in the seventh parliament. Because when it comes to his constituency, he managed to be the first person to get a radio station for the Shama area, which station today I'm sure is probably the busiest if we want to look at what happens on the airwaves in that area. Atu Pamford has tried his best for this party. He put up a party office, a constituency office, um, um, and in a constituency before he unfortunately lost his seat in uh, 2020. I am sure that if we want to write about Mr. Pamford today, we will fill about uh, 30 notebooks and not still not finished writing about him. His uh, relationship with people, his sub how subservient he is to, pay to people, good listener, and a team player. Atupan Ford really suffered a lot of ailments when he left parliament in the seventh, uh, uh, when, when he left the seventh parliament. He battled some conditions which at the point you know one ailment will lead to another going back and forth from the hospital one hospital to the other and no one expected such a strong man who used to um i would say would be seen as somebody who was as fit as a fiddle like, as we have seen to die just like that but it so happens. When death is ready to pick you, there's nothing you can do about it. At this juncture, all we need to say is that Atu fed you well. We wish the family uh, 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 our condolences. We express our sympathies to the constituents of Shama, And I hope that his memory will never be lost on this parliament. And I wish him God's 
guidance, rest in peace at all, rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also rise to add my voice to the tribute for our honorable late brother, Bamford. Mr. Speaker, just within this month, we have paid tribute to two of our former colleagues who were in the seventh parliament, and also one of our current sitting MP who just lost his life a few days ago. Mr. Speaker, this brings to what we do in this house. Whether we are prepared after exiting this house, whether we are prepared to leave the, the full hall of life. The good book tells us that there is time for everything. Time to be born and time to die. Within a time that you are born and time that you pass on to eternity counts for whatever you do on this planet Earth. Mr. Speaker, I told Pamford that we all know, especially those of us who he met in this house, know that he's not the hot-headed type of person. He's loved by all of us because he come across all political divide in this house. And in this house, you can clearly see those who do practical politicking on this floor and in this house. And those who believe that the national issues should come as paramount as anything else in this house. But after you've exited, after you've left this house, what, what, how will people see you? Would they see you as somebody who always do politics, politics with national issues? Or they see you as someone who believes in national discourse and national issues? Mr. Speaker, the time that you exit, just a year or two after leaving Parliament, and you have exited, you pass on to glory. Mr. Speaker, what really is the problem? I've just checked his age. He's only, he was only 61 years. And 61 years, and that means that he was 58 when he left this house. And 61, he has passed on to glory. Who is going to be taking care of the children? This call for national discourse on members of parliament. We speak, we sit in this house for very long periods. We don't even check our health as we were discussing this morning. We don't go to check our health status or go for medical checkups. And when you do not come back to this house, within a year or two, you pass on to glory. With all these memories, with all these good things that you have that can be an asset that can be used for, for, for this nation, then where lies our being here? And I know some of our colleagues will not be coming again to this house. Are we going to be in the, the ninth parliament and paying tribute to those who has spent so much, who has, who has done so much for this nation in this place just next two years and we come back and start paying tribute to them? No. Let's take care of our, our, our health, brothers and sisters. Let's do a thorough medical checkup. I know it's not only the medical checkups that will, will make you, uh, you know, pass on or not to pass on. But let us also take good care of ourselves. We don't take care of ourselves, Mr. Speaker. It is true that we don't even eat well. The diet, we have a dietitian here. We don't even visit the dietitian to eat very well. We leave this chamber, go to rush to our, our, our rooms. Sometimes you see our colleagues eating gary, you know, with soakings in their rooms. They don't even have places to rest, and they rush back into the floor, do all kinds of things till around 2 a.m. before we get back home. And by 10 o'clock, we are supposed to be on the floor of this house again. Mr. Speaker, we need to take a holistic look at our health and also take a holistic look at all that we do in this house. Can we sometimes change our sitting times? Maybe do it in the night as we proposed some time ago or we, we change the time that we sit so that you do whatever you want to do. You rest and when you come, you are refreshed and you do proper work and go back you know, with energy. And then when you come back the following day, you have, you have energy to work for the nation. We can't work for the nation, and when you, 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 you are no longer in this house, then you pass on to glory. Then we have not helped ourselves. Mr. Speaker, with this few words, I wish the family well, and my, my condolences to the good people of Shama and all the people that he has left behind. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, yeah, Honorable Minister for help. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Mr. Speaker, I rise to contribute. The Hilo guys are a very, 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 very good friend, a family friend, and a partner. Mr. Speaker, actual comfort has been like a family name in my home, a name in my constituency, and even a name in Takradi, where I was visiting him, and Honorable Joe Gatti will bear me out. I'm one of those who encourage Atro even to come to Parliament. So it's because my friend was an industrialist and a farmer whose endeavors I can vouch impacted on so many poor people in our country. One honorable colleague, the Western Regional Minister, was paying tribute to him. He mentioned how he was producing pepper paste. And this took Atro to several places to himself, even do projects that would give him the raw material that he was processing for export. I met the Minister of Finance when he was making efforts to get support from government to go into industrialization. At the time, I was a Deputy Minister for Finance, we couldn't help him much. But I became so interested in the work I thought was trying to do. The type of paper paste he was producing for exports was world class, of world class standards. And no wonder, eventually, he became a top person within those who were doing industrialization in our country. And no wonder when he came to the chamber as the MP for Shaman, he was part of Trade and Industry Committee. And he even chaired an agency within the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Mr. Speaker, our colleague, the former MP for Shama, got ill, sought treatment outside, came back in country, and continued his treatment at home. And almost every two weeks, when he was supposed to go for review, he would come past my place, and I'll see him off. Mr. Speaker, his death is so sad. At the age of 61, that is not what anybody would have wished. His wife is lamenting. His family, the young men he was born with, are mourning. And I am also mourning, Mr. Speaker, just with all of us who are in the chamber here. Mr. Speaker, I only pray for his soul. Pray that the good Lord keeps him somewhere very good that we can meet again when we also leave this transitional space. Mr. Speaker, with those three words, I will wish the wife and the family condolences and hope that he will be resting in the bosom of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me thank the MP for questioning him for the elegy for our departed Honorable Atu Force. A uh, pamphlet. Hey, it's not you. <laughs> the speaker uh, saying that uh, it's a small world indeed was how I came to find the Honorable Atu Force, who was actually my brother in law. Mr. So speaker, my good friend was the MP he defeated, Honorable Sifi. And actually, before the election, I was passing through the constituency one day and I saw the MPP party office strategically placed close to the police barrier. And the first thing I did was to call Honorable Sifi and I said, why will you sit here and allow the MPP to place this office right here? He said, I tried <laughs> and they won't give me the location. But the, the guy who is trying to unseat me I don't know how he did it. That was a, a sign that I, uh, my good friend, Honorable CV, was facing a very stiff competition from a guy that could be very dangerous. <laughs> but frankly, when he won and came to Parliament, Speaker, I happened to work with him on the Trade Committee. He was the Vice Chair. And um, it was very clear to me that he was a very resourceful man, very hard-working man. And who made things happen? 
Mr. Speaker, we were sitting one day and when he made a call, and he, he mentioned his father-in-law and said, Apostle Acha. And I said, who is Apostle Acha? That was my relative who passed not too long ago. Mr. Speaker, it happened to be my uncle that passed. And he was actually married to a, the daughter that I had not actually been in touch. And so my relationship with Honorable Pamford actually grew. The speaker, he was indeed a very hard working man. Uh, reference has been made about a very uh, a thorough statement he made here on the Ghana Standard Authority and the issues that really wanted the Ghana Standard Authority. It led to the ruling by the speaker that, quite frankly, led to the passage of the Ghana Standard Authority Bill that really has brought out a lot of very good things that is helping Ghana. And so, Mr. Speaker, on a day like this, we pay tribute to him. He was also very passionate about the, uh, you know, African continental free trade and how passionate he was about how Ghana would be prepared to take advantage of it. The, the kind of consulting role he played for Ghana team. Mr. Speaker, on, on a day like this, uh, we, we mourn with his family, but more importantly, it's also brings the question as has been raised, the health of members of parliament, especially those who leave parliament. Mr. Speaker, we must ask, why is it that when you leave parliament within a short period, you are, if God is not on your side, you die? The questions about our health, is something that Mr. Speaker has addressed. And if probably, uh, Mr. Speaker, some uh, requirement for members of parliament to do some quarterly checks, it has to be done because Mr. Speaker is getting very serious, it's getting very worse. But Mr. Speaker, uh, to be brief, our colleague, Honorable Atu Pamford, the departed Atu Pamford, left a mark in parliament. And we mourn him, we remember him, and we mourn with the family. And we want to uh, say on this day that we are very proud of the work he did, not only for Parliament, but for the people of Ghana. May he so rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Member for Shaman. Honorable Member for Shaman. Well, um, the last speaker. But Honorable Jogate wants to say something. Is that right? Mr. Speaker, no, 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 no. I can't take the turn of the Honorable Member for Shama. I cannot take the turn of the Honorable Member for Shama. Since it's of the, the Honorable Pamford is first concern. But I also want to contribute. So I'll say Yes, you can, so Mr. that you will be the last speaker. So if I'm taking the turn of the member for Shama, I will yield for him. No. Okay. If you speak, I'll give the last one to him. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'll be very short. The first time I met Honorable Pamford was in my hall in this country. I come back from campaigning and I wanted to go straight, it was in the night, I wanted to go straight to my bedroom and sleep. And my sister, my elder sister and my wife were sitting in the hall with this gentleman. And they said I should come and listen to him because he has fantastic ideas. I spent quite a while listening to him about what we can do as a country, about industry and so on and so forth. And it was worth my while. From that day, Honorable Panfor became my friend. He was more like a brother because Shama in the constituency next door. I remember when he was uh, coming uh, to Parliament first, he organized a football competition, like most of us do. And he was spending quite a bit of money. And I was cautioning him that uh, he should take it a little easy, because it's a long distance race. It's not a sprint. To cut a long story short, he won, and I think he did a good job for the people of Shama. Unfortunately, he has joined the fathers about. I remember when we went uh, to uh, commiserate with his wife, we went to all the Western Region MPs, but even the strength of our delegation could not bring him back to life. 
the world is but a stage. Each man having his entry and having his exit. And we are told in Ecclesiastes that it is better to go to a house of death than to go to a house of death. And one would wonder that when somebody dies, he's gone. So why should that be better than to go to a place where a person has been born? Because it reminds us that one day we shall also all die. As we stand here and eulogize our colleagues who have departed, including Honorable Pamford, we should remember that our time will also definitely come. And we pray that when our time comes, we shall find our name written in the book of life. And we shall join the faithful departed in the heavens above. Mr. Speaker, with these few words, truly few words, not the parliamentary jargon after one hour they say with these few words. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, I respectfully take my bow. Thank you very much. Very well. Now, the Honourable Member for Shama, may make your feeling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to speak to the ongoing discussions and the good things my colleagues have spoken about my immediate predecessor, Dr. Atopanfo. Mr. Speaker, the late Honorable Dr. Atopanford was a strong, dedicated, flamboyant, and an eloquent gentleman. The late Atopanford and then came into the scene, the political scene, and the Shema constituency at the time when we were gearing up. And we had about two contests, primaries, where he beat me. I remember, I remember some of my ardent followers tell me that don't allow all the people to come and address your people. When he comes, they will all fall for him. And then, lo and behold, they did. Mr. Speaker, we are speaking about a man who spent his time and energies to execute his visions and convictions. He was dedicated to his work and ensured that until he accomplished that which he has set his mind on, he will not give up. It is very sad that although death is inevitable, it's difficult for us to come to terms that he would depart at such a time like this. Such a visionary leader and a very good competitor. I would say once again, that he is also a prophet. Why do I say that? About two months prior to his demise, there was a live radio discussion at which program he intimated to the people that he is going over for a higher service and that was not going to contest again for the Shema seats. Later did we know that it was a call for a heavenly duty. Later did we know that it was a call for a heavenly duty. I will say, quoting from John chapter, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. As a speaker, I know the works of Arabo at the will forever remain in his name, though he's gone, shall forever
be on the lips of and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in eternal peace. Amen. Yes, Honorable Leader. Speaker, uh, we've, we've agreed to take the last statement to eulogize our late colleague for Kumeru, Yonabo Baswa, and that will be done by uh, the Honorable Dr. Kesini Nyako, and that will be the last for, for the day on statement. Very well, honourable members, I'm, I'm advised that the family of our brother, Honourable Philip Baswa, has formally come to inform the Speaker of the demise of a departed colleague. And that's why this tribute is being admitted at this stage. Yes, honourable member, you may make your speech. Honourable Speaker, I'm grateful to you for the opportunity to share this tribute regarding a very good friend and classmate and the member for Kumawu, Honorable Philip Atta Baswa. Honorable Speaker, we met on the campus of Trinidad Koda Secondary School in 1986 and we completed in 19, 1991. Honorable Baswa was a very active, intelligent, committed, and dedicated individual. He was a day student from Form 1 to Form 5, but almost every school day, he would come on time. Rarely will you see Honorable Baswa coming to school late. And because of that, I also do remember that the headmaster at that time, Alan Siko, made Anabo Baswa the day school prefect. That was the first time uh, a day student was made a prefect. So it was a special designation for Anabo Le Baswa. He was a calm person. He was polite, respectful, humble, and a fighter. Anabo Baswa was a fighter. If you look at his political career, he's been fighting all along. He fights and he wins. In the midst of serious opposition, in the midst of tough times, he will always stay true. Honorable Speaker, after leaving the University of Kekos in the year 2000, he was lucky to be appointed at the DCE uh, for Kumo between 2005 and 2009. He also had a stint at the Ghana Education Service. He taught at Abu Senior High School, and he was a member of the state parliament 2013, so he passed on on Monday, uh, the 27th of March uh, this year. Prior to today's de de his demise, we visited the former president, Dave Kufour, uh, in his home on 21st of March. We had a very good time uh, with the president. We had conversations. And on Thursday, a day before he was rushed to the Colombo uh, Teaching Hospital, we met in the washroom and we had discussions and we, we, we discussed a whole lot of things. Every time I met him, I called him senior because senior in the house. Philip is no more. 
when I began my political career, was one of those who even advised me and, 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 and guided me about how to go about it. A good person is gone. In this house, you see him always quiet and reserved, but very deep up here, intelligent, very helpful and supportive. We are going to miss a very good person. Masua has gone through a lot. There are some personal things about him that I wouldn't say. But in the midst of all these turbulent times and difficulties, he was resolute. Flip a survivor. And I'm sure that the good Lord will give him a befitting peace wherever he is. My heart goes to his family, especially his wife and little children. I know that Almighty God will give them comfort. Almighty God will help them. And I'm also praying and, and, and pleading to Mr. Speaker, uh, looking at the state of his kids, if this house can take it upon ourselves to do something uh, for the kids. And if we do this for the kids, I'm sure whoever he is, his soul will be happy. On that score, I want to wish our brother, Demi Fadwe, Anabo Basua, Demi Fadwe, Dwayne Amarihuno. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Me, Honorable Member for Ododododio. Do, do, do. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity granted me to contribute to this important statement on the demise of our colleague and friend, Honorable Baswa. Mr. Speaker, my days in this house have given me some comprehension into two simple characters in this house. Those of us who can call very hardline politicians and those who can call very accommodating politicians. And if I can mention one in the second category, I will mention Honorable Maswa. Very friendly, very objective, and very firm in his beliefs. Mr. Speaker, what endeared me so much to this gentleman is the fact that in the midst of difficulties, he will still smile. In the midst of challenges, he will still smile. Recently, when after the approval of the president's nominees for the various district assemblies, and he went through that harrowing experience in his district, as a ranking member on local government, I met with him to get his insight into what happened so that it could form the basis for our statement in reaction to the incidents that characterize the approval of the MMDCs. And Mr. Speaker, somebody who has been attacked, embarrassed in such a manner, when he was speaking to me, he was smiling. And when we indicated that we were going to call for a parliamentary committee to investigate these attacks, Mr. Speaker, he opened his mouth and told me, don't waste your time. I will survive it. I left him with a different impression about politicians. Every day you meet Baswa, he's full of confidence. And he was always quiet. He would smile. And I've never seen him using those, let me say, acerbic words and language on any of his colleagues in this house. He's a very different politician. After the demise of former MP, Honorable Akuto said, Honorable Member, the second of this, we to take the chair. Please continue. 
I'm trying to remind myself of Akutu say, when I heard about Basua, the only thing I told myself, why are our colleagues on the other side losing all the good men amongst them? Good men in quotes. Because these are the nice people you meet who are not hot-headed politicians like some of my colleagues that I am seeing right now. Very, very humble, very respectful people. And they talk to you first as a human being, second as a colleague, and not as a politician or an opponent. So, that morning when we heard that our brother was in a difficulty, all that we said to ourselves, may the Almighty God save him. Because everybody, all of us on this side, were worried about him. We didn't know that what had happened will be the last time we were seeing him in this house. I wish that as we remember him today, his life and character will reflect on all of us. And sometimes to think more about the relationships we are having here, which we will sustain beyond these walls. And not sometimes the hot language we use at each other. With these words, I wish the Almighty God will keep him, give him perfect rest. And I wish that we shall continue to remember the basuas of this house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, let me come to Sunyane West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank the maker of the statement and to add that this house really uh, is going to miss Honorable Basua. Mr. Speaker, I got to know Honorable Basua way back in 2005 when he was made the DC of Kumau. Mr. Speaker, I was then a regional minister, and any time uh, regional ministers had to meet with DCs, he was one person I relate so well with. It was therefore not surprising that when he came to meet me here in the House in 2013, uh, we bonded. And uh, any time as a senior to him, he needed to get understanding of how things work here in the House, he would politely approach me and then we would talk together. As if by coincidence, he also became the chairman of the Employment Committee, um, a committee that I related with as a minister that does business with that committee. He worked so well with all the members of the committee, um, irrespective of which part of the House that member is coming from. And together, we worked to achieve a lot not just for the committee, but also for my ministry. Little did we know that death was going to lay its hands on this young, hard-working man. Any time he came to me, it was about either a, the business of a committee or something that has something to do with uh, our ministry. And I recall that uh, the last time he came to this house, um, he came and sat with me, and we had quite a lot of discussions on an impending program of the ministry that he wanted to participate, only to hear the next day that he had collapsed. Whilst we were praying that he would come back and join us, the unwanted news was what we heard. It's so sad that this house is losing such a gentleman, somebody who is so committed to his work as a member of parliament. I know that as a politician, he fought a lot of battles to 
be able to regain his position here as a member of parliament. But that never in any way discouraged him for pursuing his mission of being a member of this house. I know posterity is going to remember him as an MP who fought so well um, for his people and for his country. Perhaps at this point, all I can say is that we wish him well wherever he may find himself, and the good Lord, who actually knows best what he planned for him, has called him, and we pray that the good Lord will give him a perfect rest. On that note, Mr. Speaker, once again, I want to thank the maker of the statement. Thank you. Let him come to Busa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to eulogize our colleague and friend, the now late Honorable Philip Basua. Mr. Speaker, Philip was a friend, and as a member of the Public Accounts Committee, I had the opportunity to interact and share ideas with him on a personal and intimate basis. Mr. Speaker, you would admit that his nature and demeanor was in direct opposition to mine. But interestingly, we were very good friends. Mr. Speaker, I think the good deeds and contributions that he has made are well captured and have been testified to by colleagues. But Mr. Speaker, it is only fair that I relate an instance which really underscores his humanity and his willingness to share and show concern about the plight of others. As members of the Public Accounts Committee of this Parliament, we had the opportunity of attending the Conference of African Public Accounts Committees in neighboring Liberia. Mr. Speaker, on the day that we were scheduled to return to Ghana, we got information that the pilots of Kenyan airlines had gone on strike. Having checked out of our hotel in preparedness to depart, we clearly faced some instant difficulties, including what to eat. The Honorable Philip Basua apparently had in his room banku, shito, and sardines. As generous as he was, he invited all of us to his room and we gleefully consumed the food that he had brought, perhaps in anticipation of any eventuality. Mr. Speaker, I relate this story to underscore the type of person we are talking about and the person we have lost. Mr. Speaker, I can only say we miss him already. We extend our condolences to his immediate family, to his constituents, and to say that it is not just a loss by his family, by his constituents, by his party, but it's a great loss to Madagana. We wish him 
well where he is, and we know the good Lord will keep him in his bosom until we reconvene again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, let me come to offend soon enough. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to the statement able made by the Honorable Member of Padasso on the death, the demise of the Honorable Member for Kumeo, Honorable Sua. Mr. Speaker, the good people of Kumeo have lost an illustrious son. The good people of Ashanti has also lost a politician, a politician who is so humble, a politician who is so much eager and anxious to bring development to the people. He was being admired by the people, particularly the rural people in Kumeu. Mr. Speaker, I had known Honorable Philip Basua in 1992 in the students' activist days when we were doing politics at a time when Ghana has been ruled by the military for some time, as our young students and the university students were so much eager to have democracy restored to Ghana. And that is where I happened to uh, meet Philip Batsua in the company of Honorable Member of Parliament for Manchia South, and a couple of them who have now found ourselves here in Parliament. Indeed, the Honourable Member of Parliament for Mansia, Honourable Apu, Opuku Prempe, who was our regional coordinator there in the school days, coordinating affairs of our student activism, trying to make sure that democracy is restored in Ghana and the riding on the hoops of the new patriotic party. That was where I met, first met Honourable Phil Asua. Mr. Speaker, no wonder he also pitched cards to his base, which is Kumewu, and later became the secretary to the executive committee within that constituency. And through a dint of hard work, in 2005, Mr. Speaker, when His Excellency, the former president, Honorable Kufo, became the president, he was also appointed a district chief executive to serve the people, while at the same time also appointed as a district chief executive for the people of the so North. And through that, Scott, we worked so hard to bring development to our respective districts. And Basua was so much loved by the people of the He was so humble. And he worked so hard to endear himself to the people, particularly the chiefs, and all that. And eventually in 2009, when I also became a member of parliament for the people of Ghana. He joined in 2012, also became a member of parliament for the people of Kubeu. And indeed, we served on several committees together. And in all this, he excelled. He served the committees with a kind of diligence, hard work, and with the sense of bringing development to the good people of Basua. Mr. Speaker, he was so humble, he was a real gentleman. He was somebody who loved to, to, to act rather than to speak. Mr. Speaker, he was somebody who was also caring. We worked together to have a very good, close family. And interestingly, he had a series of challenges in terms of family and all of that. And for the past three years, he has always concentrated, devoted a lot of his time and attention resources, trying to at least see his wife survive from protected diseases. But unfortunately, he couldn't even live to see the end of the full recovery of his wife when just last week, last week, Mr. Speaker, after a series of stressful work, we're together here and all that. And the next thing we hear was that our friend, our brother, it's, it's gone to his maker. It's really sad. 
And this also brings to, 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 to mind that the work of parliament is such that it's, we need to avert our minds to the lives, the health of members of parliament. The work is so stressful. We don't have even systems where we cancel ourselves. We don't have systems where we psych ourselves to be able to attend to health needs. And members of parliament are so vulnerable, such that we, we, with little things, we, 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 we are no more. I think that it's about time that, as a house, we think about how we'll be able to work to improve upon the well-being of members of parliament. It's so important because some of the deaths could have easily been averted if there has been some structured, I mean, the, the structured provisions to be able to address our health needs. Mr. Speaker, we have lost an illustrious brother, we've lost a illustrious son, the people of Kumewu and the family, indeed, the wife, the sons, and the entire um, Kumewu constituency party fraternity have lost a great gentleman and it is my prayer that the good lord will continue to protect his soul and then he will prepare a very fine place in the bosoms of the lord mr speaker so that when you and i join him together we celebrate in the lord thank you for the opportunity given me to elogize my brother thank you let me come to Sabdai. Uh, speaker, thank you very much to add my voice to the statement made by my brother, Prof. Sanyaku, in respect of Honorable uh, Basua. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, uh, last week, Thursday, when you adjourn the house after the debate and the decision that the votes will be taken the following day, he and I, he beckoned me and then we walked out. We were engaging some discussions until I got to the first lift. We stood there for a couple of minutes and then we parted company and we said good night to each other hoping that the next day he asked whether the next day there will be action i said i cannot tell and that was how we parted only to get here on friday to be told that he had fallen ill seriously ill mr speaker the honorable basua and myself serve on the public accounts committee he's a very very effective member it was equally effective as the chairman of the committee that, has, that now operates like the Public Accounts Committee, which is the Employment Committee. Because of the interrogation of the annual accounts of the uh, state-owned enterprises that the Honorable Comrade on course who serves as the ranking member. So their work in promoting the oversight responsibilities of this house was was a very critical one it was so effective that last year if you recall they did a lot of work in respect of the SOEs and it became very very topical in this house the speaker the honorable Basua very quiet man but very effective always in the house to perform his duties like the honorable Clementa Park said we we'll miss him a lot on the Public Accounts Committee because of how he, he carried himself and how we work together. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this also brings to the fore that as members and as a House, we should have a real look or reevaluate how we work in this House. The work is sedentary. That is, is, is about 95% sitting down. And we sit for very long hours. So instead of asking members 
to produce their annual medical reports when we are elect, freshly elected. I want to suggest that now we should be having annual medical review so that you are not reviewed medically every four years, like Parliament does. You should be interested in reviewing our health every, every year. Because I, I still can't believe that Honorable Baswa that I saw Thursday night fell sick the next day and today he's not with us. I mean, there, there ought to be signs. But there was none on Thursday night when he was living here. So we, we need that to be done for all of us. And it appears that within the past one week, MPs and former MPs will be in the news uh, for these reasons. Mr. Speaker, I want to end by extending my condolences to the family especially. And I'm aware that the wife too is not well. And I can only pray that she will she'll stay stronger and be able to go through this painful exit of the husband who has actually been, been, been helping to maintain her in her current health, health status. And to the family, and of course to the MPP for losing such, such an effective, effectively quiet man on your side. I pray that the, the people of Kumau will seize the opportunity and get the NDC to replace to replace him to be able to contribute towards the work on the floor. I thank you for the opportunity. Yes, let me come to Juabe. Juabe, yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my heart weeps. My heart, my head aches. I still can't believe it that Honorable Baswa is born. Last Thursday, I did spend some time with him. We normally have our pep talks whenever we come in. Um, I've been to courts. I've been to disciplinary meetings with him. We, we always seem to have similar issues in our constituencies. And we've been struggling since 2013. All the things that my honorable colleagues have said are true. What I would want to add is the concluding part. Because I remember on Thursday, we strategized on how the next four years or how the next two years we are going to work so hard and make sure that we win our primaries. I'm still in shock. He always mentors me. He always tells me to hold on. He was so hopeful. And I, I still can't believe he's gone. But we miss him. And we know that God will keep him safe wherever he is. Honorable. Mr. Speaker, I elect to continue for her. I'll ask the region, Greater Accra Region Minister to continue. Mr. Speaker, I rise to contribute to the statements ably made by the Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, perhaps um, I share the same emotions with the Honourable Member who just contributed to the statement. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Basua was a very humble gentleman, quiet, and as a matter of fact, very, very reserved. So much so that sometimes you wonder, with the greatest of respect, whether indeed, how did he even go through his private to emerge 
as a candidate and even go through general elections, taking cognizance of the challenges that we go through as politicians to come to this august house. Mr. Speaker, his demise reminds me of our colleague, the departed so honorable Jaku. Now, Mr. Speaker, it raises eyebrows and a lot of questions as to the pressure and stress, for that matter, on members of parliament in the plenary. Mr. Speaker, I sat by Honorable Basua the day before he passed. And in fact, I was sitting by him whilst he was having his usual kinky and stuff. We spoke. Little did I know that the following morning he will be gone. What are we on earth for as human beings? I don't know. But again, it sends a clear signal to us. Mr. Speaker, perhaps this is the final opportunity to respectfully, I know that is in existence already, but as members of parliament, are there in place some structures for us by way of counseling, by way of psychologists, by way of a specialist. Um, we have come too far as parliamentarians not to have a hospital of, of our own on our own. Maybe the time has come for parliament as a whole, uh, as an arm of uh, the legislature, rather, sorry, to have a hospital built purposely for members of parliament. I know that may sound a bit discriminatory, but it is, it is, it will be appropriate to have that. Not just the parliamentarians, but the speaker, we have uh, clerks at table and all who facilitate the work of parliamentary practice. The speaker, I listened to a post on the on WhatsApp, and clearly, listening to the post, it tells you that indeed the honourable gentleman had problems in his constituency. There was too much pressure and load on him, and I know that quite a number of my colleagues here are experiencing the same. Well, God give it, and He take it. Mr. Speaker, I'm getting emotional, so I may have to leave. But Mr. Speaker, we wish his family and all and the constituency. In fact, we express our condolences to them, and I pray, Mr. Speaker, that this appeal that I've made will be considered that Parliament should have uh, a medical facility. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on weekends you drive around a car and you have no place even to sit as a recreational centre as a member of Parliament. Because you sit somewhere and the next thing you're on the front page. Oh, MP is found here even eating watch it. Mr. Speaker, these two things also helps for one to go there and then ease off the stress. A recreational area for us and a medical facility. Mr. Speaker, with these few words, I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Let me come to the ranking. Mr. Speaker, I rise to add my voice to the statement eulogizing the passing away of Honorable Philip Basua the MP for Kumawu, and the chairman for the Committee of Employment, Social Welfare, and State-Owned Enterprises. Honorable Basua was a gentleman's gentleman. 
He was long suffering. He was stubborn when it came to protecting the truth. He was unmovable and unshakable no matter the cabal paged against him. So strong was Honorable Basua in his convictions that he became the leader of what others called Basua and Co. But Basua believed in consensus building. Indeed, on the committee, Basua's best friend was Honorable Haruna Idrisu. He will be the first to say, Kwabna, leader says you will come in. Kwabna, is there, have you reserved some reading material for leader? Where well, reading material means documents that we work with. <laughs> but more importantly, Honorable Basua was willing to learn. We'll get to the committee meeting and if the subject matter, if we have an SO in the energy sector before us, he will open the meeting and say, Kwabna, handle them. He will sit down and take notes because he will concede that he was disadvantaged in that sector. He was a leader who gave people the opportunity and the space to operate. Basua was a gentleman. Basua represented what I see as the best ethos of politics. Gentle, persuasive, long-suffering, persevering, but committed to a cause. When I read the press release, by the MPP, the flags, MPP flags should fly at half mast across all MPP offices. I saw that as a vindication for a man who had been so badly persecuted by people who did not understand him. In death, he won the battle of honor. In death, he won the battle of integrity. In death, Basua showed us that ultimately no political cabal will succeed if we are strong, if we are committed, and if we are loyal to our party. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you. I'm taking one, one, and okay, uh, Okanque Central. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I pray this blowing cockpit in place I'm on my feet. I'm speaking to the chair, please. I'm very serious. Mr. Speaker, paying this glorious tribute to my brother, my client, my friend, and above all, my brother-in-law. Basua was my akunta. 
That's how I referred to him. And truly, he was my Akunta. Russell Kumewu. And um, we shared a lot of things in common. There was not a single time I would drive through Bompata. I would go and not stop at Kumewu and eat my Ampesi with him. You always find him at the late BMS's residence, waiting for you, prepared his Ampesi with some soup, and calling you on your way from Accra. No way drinking. Oh, I just got to Adon Fair. I'll just join you in 30 minutes. The speaker, let me read a message to you from his PA when he fell ill. Hello, Honorable. Good morning. Doctors say, I'm just quoting, doctors, doctor says there is now more oxygen flowing through the body. That is an improvement from the level from yesterday. So we are still hoping that continuous there is a continuous upward trajectory. However, they insist no visitors for now. We kept on pursuing a good cause to save our brother's life. We kept on praying. I left the chamber. All of us left on Friday early morning. You and I were in Kumasi for Sir Dennis's wife's funeral. So we were, I was always in touch with the PA and the brother. The speaker, Kumewu has gone through a lot in our politics. Majority leader, will, I'm sure, will contribute from Rio Adai Baswa's time to Yaba to Philip Baswa and the troubles in Kumewu politics. And in the midst of all this happening was our good brother, Philip Baswa, who was the DC and the president for first time. The speaker, question is whether my Akunta enjoyed his life as a politician, as an MP. You all saw what happened to him during the selection of DC. We all saw that he harbored a lot of pain. His wife was not feeling too well. He always had to leave the kids, school, come and spend time in Accra and what have you, Mr. Speaker. If you look at the 2020 elections of Kumau, whilst Nana Kufa, the president of Ghana, was gathering over 80.6 something percent of the votes, my brother was raking around 51 percent of the votes in Kumau. independent candidate was able to win not less than 11,000 of the votes. Baswa only clinched 14,000. Mr. Speaker, our brother went through a lot in Kumau. And I believe that we ought to be fair and be candid with what we speak about on this sad day. Mr. Speaker, my dear sister from Draven could not end her contribution because she knows what I'm talking about. So, there isn't much I would want to say but to wait for the day that will lay our brother to rest and uh, to wish the family well so we meet again. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to this tribute to our good friend, Honorable Philip Batois. Mr. Speaker, this man was a great man in all respects. He was gentle, kind, and considerate in everything he did. 
and as a member of parliament, I got to know he was so committed to his constituency and to his party. Mr. Speaker, I got to understand him more than I used to when we traveled together. After interacting for some time, he opened up to me. He told me what was inside him, what was deep inside him, the pain he was going through. Mr. Speaker, at the time I was speaking to him, it did not leave him at all. He felt very bad that he so, so committed himself to his party and there were people inside the party that worked against him. <laughs> but Do you fear, sir? it shows that Do you fear, sir? he is a man of character. <laughs> that despite all the challenges he faced in life, he still was committed and indeed, he told me he still loved his party and would want to make sure in everything he did, the party will stand first before everything. And it shows that he's exemplary in character, he's exemplary in commitment to a cause, and he can be trusted, he could be trusted with everything that the party wanted to do. And that he wanted to convey this to the people who wanted him down. The speaker, in his death, he has conveyed it. It shows that people are not changed by externalities, which may be working against them. The character of the person is not changed because other people have a different character. It simply means that you strengthen who you are. Mr. Speaker, but the death of this friend of ours, shows that we need to do more than we do. And I would like to suggest to you, Mr. Speaker, for it to be made a compulsion that at the beginning of every session, or maybe every sitting, every member of parliament will bring a medical report, comprehensive medical report about himself, so that we know you are fit and strong. This sudden death that occur to many of our friends and colleagues is disturbing and should not be allowed to continue if we can avoid it by taking precautions about ourselves. I know that when I came to Parliament the first time, at every sitting, our doctor will come and it was composite for you to do all the checks about yourself. You don't need to present it to anybody, but there was an avenue for you to check everything, especially your, your, your internal glands and your prostate for the men. I, I think it's necessary and we should go back to it and make sure it becomes part of our lives. Lots of people are dependent on us. The nation itself is dependent on us. So much is invested in the member of parliament to the extent that his life is becoming or is, is critical and synonymous to the progress of the nation because members of parliament represent the people of Ghana and our voices represent the totality of the voice of the people. And so care must be taken not just by the, by, by, by the status quo but by ourselves so that we can live long and do what we are required to do as members of parliament. His death was a big shock. It reminds me of what Shakespeare said about death, that it's a brief candle and that it comes and it goes. The men and women who struts and frets on, the, on, 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 on earth will suddenly leave the earth. The speaker, we leave the earth, but something remains here. This is the the character we bring into being whilst we are alive, what we leave behind as, as human beings committed to the causes we belong, and eventually the niche we cut in the totality of society. Mr. Speaker, in remembering our friend and in paying this eulogy to him, we will say that may he rest in peace and may he be received at the right side of God so that 
he would have benefited from all the good he has done. In the end, it is to make sure that the total Ghanaian population live worthy lives. And he did what he did for the people of Ghana, for his constituency, for the parliament of Ghana, for all of us. And so, Mr. Speaker, may he rest in peace. Thank you. May I come to leadership? Very well. Okay. Yes, honourable member for Dome Kwabinya. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I will thank the maker of the statement for bringing this statement on the floor. We are all sad by the unfortunate incident of losing a brother, a friend. Honorable Basua and I entered Parliament the same year, and we actually sat close to each other. He was an advisor. He would be there for you when you need him. He would share constituency issues with you and advise you on the way forward. I think Ghana is lost a great son and my heart pours out to the family of honorable the late honorable Baswa, the MPP fraternity and myself and my family I say so because he would always call my father his uncle He would always make time for my church invitation and will stay throughout the program with you. This is somebody who cares, somebody you can call a friend, a brother, a husband. And I know that the good Lord will keep him in his bosom. And as the Holy Bible always states, we should always give thanks to the Lord in all situations. And so, Mr. Speaker, what I'll end with my statement is, Demri Fadwye, may the soul of our brother rest in perfect peace. I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Yes, Honorable Leader. Oh. Well, well. Honorable Eric. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to also join colleagues in paying tribute to our brother and colleague who hesitated some few days ago. The Speaker, Honorable Baswa, has been a friend, a brother to all of us. He's a very honest person who wants to be in peace with anybody he comes across. But Mr. Speaker, he has gone through a lot of painful experience and uh, he's been sharing these experiences with some of us. It's true. Mr. Speaker, you are aware that you and Honorable Baswa went through the same ordeal. <laughs> and therefore, you have a practical feel of exactly what he went through. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, what we must understand as politicians is that life is too short. And so, if by the grace of God, you are given the opportunity to lead. Let's respect each other. Power will not be with us forever. One day, no matter what happens, regardless of the situation, regardless of the influence, we'll leave power behind. So let's treat 
our colleagues with some respect and let's understand that we are all in this struggle for the common good of our people. In fact, it is painful that at the age of 50 plus, we are losing a colleague of his caliber. Mr. Speaker, we also have to look at the pressure that we go through as politicians and the pressure that we mount on our colleagues, even within the same party. Needlessly, <laughs> we have to look at all these things and make sure that, yes, politics is not a vehicle for people to assume power to do the things that they want for themselves, by a vehicle to assume power and then render services to our people. Yes, some few days ago, while I was coming from my office to this chamber, I met my colleague in the corridor. And Mr. Speaker, we spoke for some 10, 15 minutes. And he shared with me some of the painful experiences he's gone through. Mr. Speaker, can you imagine that as an elected representative of the people, even when the district chief executive of his own district was appointed, he was prevented from participating in the confirmation of the district chief executive. Mr. Speaker, something that ought to have been condemned by this House, but Parliament did not do anything about it. Those who have executive power did nothing about it. Mr. Speaker, this is unfair. And these are some of the things that we must come together as a house and condemn and ensure that we instill discipline in our body politics. Mr. Speaker, I mention you because you also went through the same experience. <laughs> At some point, you nearly resigned from politics. Yes. But God saved you. Amen. We pray that the soul of the departed will rest in perfect peace. But the prayer is that may the good Lord protect forgive, our brother and give him peace. But Mr. Speaker, what is most critical is the family and the children he has left behind. Is there any arrangement in place by Parliament to take care of the, the wife and the children, there is nothing. So, Mr. Speaker, normally what happens is that even after the death, immediately after the death, we'll be thinking about by election. We're then looking at how we can take care of the case, the small, small ones is left behind. It is about time we put in place mechanisms to support some of these children. Because some, when you see some of our colleagues out there, sometimes you get worried. Just some two months ago, a colleague of us, who was here for three times, was ill, Mr. Speaker. There was no money, and some of us had to contribute to enable him pay hospital bills. When we are in the house, every day we hear the public talking about MPs are making money, MPs are making money. But when the person leaves Parliament within 10 days, you see that everything changes. That is the reality of parliamentary life. What they say of us is exactly the opposite of our situation. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is reminding us that regardless of our age and our power or influence, one day we'll also be called to eternity. And so let's put in place measures that will put smiles on the faces of the case and the family that will leave behind. Otherwise, we sit here, talk, 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 express all the ideas as if, if we are giving the world, we can even govern and eventually leave our families in the institution of everything. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity and it is my prayer that the good Lord who brought us here 
and who will call us at the appropriate time to take good care of our colleague, give him a special place in the servants and protect the family that he has left behind. And it's my prayer that we all as politicians will from today come to the realization that power is just for a short time. And whenever we are given the opportunity, we should treat our colleagues as equal human beings with the same respect so that all of us will one day, when we appear before the Almighty God, we have something positive. On this note, I wish him very well. Thank you, sir. Very well. Leader. Speaker. Thank you for the opportunity to add my voice to eulogize our colleague who departed the earth in circumstances that endure it, they shock all of us. Mr. Speaker, in these days of carnage and sundry bestialities, death really no longer agitates most people. However, the sudden transition of the Honorable Basua did touch the hearts of men and women in this house. The Honorable Basua most times kept to himself. But indeed, he was a man who was bearing a very heavy load on his shoulders. He was a man of few words, or one could see in any encounter with him that he was a struggling man, within and without. The speaker, he was indeed a man of soul, a survivor, all manner of conspiracies around him, and yet by kind cases of God, he managed to overcome. Here in this house, the speaker, we, the then minority leader, and I elected to make him the de facto chair of the special budget committee and he discharged his responsibilities in a very responsible manner and anytime he had problems he reclined to us to seek our own advice on the way forward for us the speaker only Yesterday, we, some members from within the group of um, the Special Budget Committee arrived in Ghana from a trip that we embarked on in Israel, which trip was mooted when he was a chair, a de facto chair of the Special Budget Committee. Unfortunately, after 20, the 2020 elections, they have to be shifted to the Committee on Employment, Social Welfare, and State Enterprises to chair that committee. Whilst he left the Special Budget Committee to be chaired by the Honorable Patricia Apiji. The Speaker, I think it's important that I clear this. Because the speaker in announcing the transition of our colleague, that is, he announced from the chair that the colleague had collapsed. I think it was taken on face value and made to appear as if the man had collapsed in parliament. And so all news coverage was to the effect that the Honorable Basua had collapsed in Parliament. Nothing could be further away from that. 
And indeed, the day when we heard, and some people were suggesting that if he was stable enough, perhaps we could ferry him to the presence of parliament to be counted among those who will be voting. I insisted that not knowing the exact condition, it would be risky to do that because if we brought him and anything happened, it would be attributed to parliament. The speaker, we didn't do that. And it's good that we didn't, you know, go on that path. If we had, and the man had transitioned the following day, I shut up and think what would have happened to this house. It would have been disastrous for the image of parliament that we forced him to come, and then the health status declined, which led to his death. I am saying nothing of that sort happened. The speaker, isn't it ironical? Isn't it ironical that when we first came to this house in 1997, the first person who represented the constituency on the ticket of MPP, on the ticket of MPP was one Anabo Basua, who at a critical time when we had to vote, had to be ferried from 37 military hospital to this house to participate in the voting. Not too long thereafter, the Anabo Basua transitioned. There was a by-election which the Anabo Yabao won and came to parliament. Then another Basua comes to replace Yaba, and that Basua also transitions mystery the performance of his duties in this house. The speaker, that is perhaps a paradox that may be difficult to unravel. Mr. Speaker, today the family came to formally inform us about the transition of the Honorable Basua, which is what has occasioned the tribute that has been paid in his honor by um, the tribute which has been paid by the Honorable Dr. Nyako, the MP for Kwadasu. The speaker, it's important that this information came to be passed to us because the house we are joining today and upon adjournment we may not perhaps come back within 60 days of the transition as the amendment that was effected the constitution provides within 60 days of the transition there must be a violation so when the family came and were discussing it we reminded them that our colleagues on the other side of the political divide, the NDC, will be having their primaries, parliamentary and presidential primaries, on May 13th. Now, the last Saturday, before the expiry of the 60 days then, will be May 20th. And if we want to have the House join ranks to give him a befitting burial and funeral, then perhaps the likely date would be the 20th of May. The family indicated that they're going to process it and get back to us. But I believe that maybe um, in the final analysis, likely the funeral may hold on the 20th of uh, May. Uh, then thereafter, the burial service to follow on the 21st of May. So that may be the tentative agreement, but I'm not the family head, Mr. Speaker. I'm just talking about what happened today in our encounter with the family. Mr. Speaker, the, the affairs of this world are very difficult to comprehend. Knowing what we saw about the man the day before his, trans his transition. And one cannot really bring any science to analyze it. One can only hope that this earth will lie gently on him, especially given what we are hearing 
about the condition of the spouse. Not the best of circumstances. This figure, maybe this is one case that we have to come together to see how to salvage the situation, even after his own transition. So, my hope and trust is that the Spirit will be afforded eternal rest in peace. The Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Honorable members, since Tuesday, Mr. Speaker, make us observe one minute silence. We will not do same again, only to wish him a restful rest with the Lord. So leadership. You've done well. Honorable members, we observe sad, many silence for our brother on Tuesday. So, leadership, let me come to you for direction. Speaker, um, at the commencement of public business, item 8A. 8A. Yeah. We did that last Tuesday. Item 8A. I, I, on page 4. Page 4 of today's order paper. And speaker, with your leave, for it to be done by the 30 minutes of final. Lay. Very well. Honourable members, let's turn to page four. Page four. At the commencement of public business, we will begin with the presentation of papers by the Minister for Finance. Is the Minister for Finance around? I have sought your leave for it to be done by the Deputy Minister. Very well. Deputy. Annual reports of the management of the energy sector levies and accounts for the year 2022. Annual public debt management reports for the 2022 financial year. Honourable, honourable members, the report have been duly presented. They are referred to the Finance Committee for consideration and report. Yes, Lina. So we, are, we are actually taking the two, I and I, I. Then we can proceed. Yeah, so we've done the I and I, I. Now we should then be taking... Um, 8B on page 5. 8B. Yes. Minister for Employment and Labor Relations. 8B. Contract agreement between the Government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the National Pensions Regulatory Authority and Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, and the Attain Enterprise Solutions Limited in partnership with Omni Technologies Limited for an amount of three million six hundred and ninety five thousand three hundred and thirty eight United States dollars eighty seven cents for the deployment of a risk based supervision system and ERP system platform. Honourable members, the report has been duly presented. It is referred to the Committee for Finance for consideration. 
end report. Are you doing the C? Speaker, we can now move on to on same page D, and we are taking I I and I I I. Speaker, would you leave the the deputy chair, the vice chair of the committee is here, if you could be allowed to do, take it. Very well, honourable member for Okanekwe Central. Reports of the Finance Committee on the financing agreement between the government of the Republic of Ghana represented by the Ministry of Finance and the International Development Association of the World Bank Group for an amount of 150 million United States dollars to finance the West Africa Food System Resilience Program, Phase 2, under the multi-phase programmatic approach. Reports of the Finance Committee on the on lending agreement between the government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the Ministry of Finance, and the Development Bank Ghana for an amount of 170 million euros to support the establishment of a financially sustainable development bank under the finance contract agreement between the government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the Ministry of Finance and Investment Bank for an amount of 170 million euros for the establishment of the Development Bank of Ghana. Yes. Well, well, Speaker, understandably, under the rules, I'll find it difficult to come. We are, we are borrowing to set up a development bank. And we're asking Parliament to consider a loan to borrow to establish a development bank. Now, when we ask that this bank be brought to Parliament to be established, by an act of parliament, we're told that that was not to be done. So why is parliament now coming to consider a loan agreement for the establishment of the same bank? When we, you recall, we even warned that learn from the experiences of the collapse bank and let's use parliament to knit some of the issues that emerge from it. I have a difficulty accepting that on the day parliament is rising, you want to borrow 170 million to set up a bank which is already established. I think that this one must stand down for us to look at it when we come back to Rolling. Because we already have a development bank. I can understand why we are doing this. Publicly here, we demanded that the Minister for Finance comes here and we establish the development bank by a bill and by an act of parliament and to deal with the concerns following the 23 billion which was spent in. Banks and their customers. So, when they they want to borrow to set up a development bank. They are speaker with all respect. The committee should take action on this matter and let us go and come in the interest yeah, of yeah. Yes, the vice chairman of the committee. Mr. Speaker, I disagree with uh, Honorable Harina Idris. Mr. Speaker, House passed the Development Finance Act which regulates development finance institutions, the Development Bank of Ghana. The European Bank gave a facility to the uh, Development Bank, and they are now on-lending the facility as a committee for two days with uh, the authorities of the bank. And we are satisfied. That is why we are laying the report. So we cannot lay a report and have a member arrest in the lane of a report. This is novel. So I beg to disagree with the minority. Honorable Harry Nigeria. Former. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the loan was contracted by the government of Ghana and not the development bank. The government of Ghana is only lending the loan to the Development Bank of Ghana so that they can get it back in future to be able to use it for the purposes of debt servicing. So it's the government of Ghana that borrowed the money from the European, Development, European Bank. And the government of Ghana has signed agreement. So it's this house that approved the loan between 
uh, Government of Ghana and the European Central Bank. What we seek to do now is to unlearn the loan to the development bank so that we can get the money back. Very well, leader. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, just as the minority leader is saying, when there is, there is a practice and indeed a convention in this house, when government has contracted loans and then on length for procurement of vehicles, for instance, to GPRG, which is a private entity. So people should understand these things. However, if you're looking for maybe questioning the basis of what you do, that's another conversation. That's another conversation. But that this House has done so before on many, many occasions. Honorable former minority leader, leave your former past and you will correct what I'm saying. <laughs> Honourable members, with this understanding, the report has been duly presented. They are to be distributed to honourable members. Yes, leader. Speaker, the, I just realised the earlier referral uh, related to item 8B, a paper laid by the Minister for employment and labor relations was rather referred to the finance committee it should be referred to the committee of employment finance it should yeah, rather be referred that, to the that's why i made the refer to no so i will respect it should not be referred to the finance committee it should rather go to the committee of employment Very well. Honourable members, the area referred to the Finance Committee is rather to the Committee of Employment and Welfare. Are we adding the leadership of Finance Committee too? Okay. So the referral is now to the Committee of Employment and Social Welfare. So yeah, may we now turn to other paper addendum and take item 1A I I to go to your leave to be done by the Deputy Minister of Finance. Well, well. yes. Reconciliation report on the petroleum holding fund for year 2022. Honourable members, the report has been duly presented. It was referred to the Committee for Finance. Speaker, we are taking the two. I, I, I. Annual report on public private partnership projects for the year 2022. Honourable members. Honourable members, the reports of III are duly reported to the House and they are referred to the Finance Committee for consideration and report. So, yeah, on the same page, item 1B. Item 1B on other people addendum by the Vice Chair of the Committee. Very well. Report of the Finance Committee on the loan agreement between the Government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the Ministry of Finance, and the Government of the Republic of Korea, acting through the Export Import Bank of Korea. Government Agency for the Economic Development Cooperation Fund for an amount in Korean won not exceeding the equivalent of 30 million United States dollars to finance the medical equipment provision project in response to COVID-19. Honorable members, the report has been duly presented. The report is to be distributed to honorable members. Let's 
Together we continue with, um, can we take all together? Before? Very well. Yes. Report of the Finance Committee on the financing agreement between the Government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the Ministry of Finance and the International Development Association of the World Bank Group for an amount of 150 million United States dollars to finance the primary health care investment project. Reports of the Finance Committee on the financing agreement between the Government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the Ministry of Finance and the International Development Association of the World Bank Group for an amount of 150 million United States dollars to finance the public financial management for service delivery program. Reports of the Finance Committee on the financing agreement between the Government of the Republic of Ghana, represented by the Ministry of Finance and the International Development Association of the World Bank Group for an amount of 200 million United States dollars to finance the Ghana Digital Acceleration Project. Honorable members, the report of I, 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 IV in page two of the addendum paper in duly presented, they are to be distributed to honorable members. Speaker, other paper, addendum two. I. Speaker, other paper, addendum two. Um, item one. And Speaker, let me seek your leave for it to be done by the leader of the house on behalf of the chair of the committee of the whole. Yes, the chairman of the committee. Honorable members, I then do paper two. Right. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, as the as the chief whip has indicated, I'm standing in for the chair of the committee of the whole. And the, this committee was chaired by the speaker himself when we sat. Reports of the Committee of the Whole on the Drought Public Elections Registration of Voters Regulations 2022. Honorable members, the report is duly presented. The report are to be distributed to the honorable members here present. Speaker, we can now turn to the original order paper, page 7. Original order paper, page 7, and take item 12. Speaker, I will further seek your leave to take it for and on behalf of the chair of the committee. Honorable members, let's turn to page 7, item listed 12. Motion by the chairman of the committee. So we are right to move that this honorable house adopts the reports of the representatives from the Parliament of Ghana to the Pan African Parliament on the first ordinary session of the sixth Parliament of the Pan African Parliament held from Monday, 24th October to Friday. 11th November 2022 in Midrad, South Africa. Speaker, in so doing, I present the committee's report and invite Hansard to capture the entirety of it, whilst I limit myself to the conclusion of the report. Speaker, Ghana's representatives to Pan African Parliament would wish to state that the issues of peace and security, integration of the continent, unconstitutional changes of government, the African Free Trade Continental Area featured prominently on the agenda for the session. The House was unanimous that the growth of the continent will depend on the level of peace and security and call on the AU to work towards ending the several ongoing conflicts in Africa. The House also acknowledged that Africa could progress only when elements of true democracy are adhered to by the people of Africa. The House therefore called on countries that had not ratified the Charter on Democratic Elections and Governance to do so. 
The ratification of the Charter and adherence to the principles expressed by the Charter will be expected to curtail the unconstitutional changes of government in Africa. Speaker, I shall present. Yes, honorable members, the motion. But, honorable Chief Whip, members do not have their reports. That will respect. A lot of copies were distributed earlier. I, I can confirm that. So nobody is here to even second. Yes. The speaker, that is why I was calling the members of the Pan African Parliament to be present before the motion will be taken. So it will only be appropriate for me to second the motion so that there will be the, the motion will be before the house but why being that i will plead with the house to step it down for the members of the pan-african delegation to be present in the chamber so that they will make Mr. Speaker, copies are being distributed, so I second the motion on the floor. But Mr. Speaker, this is the more reason why many at times we call when it comes to composition of delegation to such international parliament, we lay emphasis on seniority. Ghana's delegation on the Pan-African Parliament is very apt in presenting reports to this house simply because most of them have been there for long and now can rub shoulders in the Pan-African Parliament. And I'm told that we even chair the Finance Committee in the Pan-African Parliament. So our members, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, are making us proud there. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, if you go to most of these East African countries, there are special MPs dedicated for this international Parliaments. If you go to Kenya, go to the East Africans, they have people dedicated for only those Pan Africa, ECOWAS, Southeast Africa, and so IPU, CPA members are dedicated, dedicated for those people, and they, their responsibility is only to that. So you can meet somebody from the East African Parliament on an international delegation like IPU or CPA, and the person will be frequent in coming. So any time there's an opportunity for election for any position in those parliament, they take it up. So these are some of the opportunities Ghana should be looking at. But when you come to our place, in our parliament here, most of the times, every two years we change. Sometimes four years we change. The maximum eight years. So by the time the person becomes conversant and build rapport and relationship, in those parliaments, to be able to contest for a position, oh, the person is called back. And these are matters we must take interest. Your Ghana used to be the star of Africa in representing representation in those international parliaments. But now, it seems to be a thing of the past. And these are matters we must work on. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to second the motion. So once again, the motion is seconded. Very well. Honourable members, the motion has been moved, it has been seconded, it is now before the House for consideration. Yes, Honourable Member for Tamale South. Mayor Speaker, let me thank you for the opportunity to contribute to the motion and to commend our able representatives to the Pan-African uh, Parliament to continue to hold the touch of Ghana high but well, Mr. Speaker, the Pan-African Parliament, as observed by former President of uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Olusogu Obasanjo, in paragraph 6-1 of the committee's report, if there is any moment in Africa's journey that the Pan-African Parliament be placed right, it is... But well, Mr. Speaker, concerns are being raised, and may I with respect refer you to page 6, paragraph 8, how constitutional changes in government 
We are concerned about the unconstitutional changes in Mali, in our neighbor Burkina Faso, and in Guinea. It doesn't bode well for the 21st century that we still have countries in Africa that are not holding close to democratic values and ethos, and to allow for full citizen participation in determining their political leadership and how they should be governed. So this is a matter that the Pan-African Parliament must take up much more seriously. My observation has always been that we should look at the European Parliament and style PAN to be like the European Parliament. Today we are talking about an expansionist group of the European Union absorbing many other countries including Finland. Yet in Africa, what does the Pan-African Parliament do? Economic uh, unification, Africa is still struggling. Trade support and trade within and intra-Africa, we are still struggling. These are all matters we should take up in order that, Mr. Speaker, we can accelerate the pace of development in Africa. But as I said, my observation is just to emphasize that we are not particularly happy with the undemocratic developments in those three African countries. Mr. Speaker, who talks about the free African trade, which provides a good opportunity to expand trade in Africa, and I believe that Africa should take full advantage of it, which is headquarters in Accra. As well as you are not listening, I actually referred you to a page and a paragraph. Mr. Speaker, I did. I referred to paragraph 9192 and now 93. And she should look at it well. It's still after. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, well. Honorable Montaka, I'll call you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'll, I'll just want to commend my colleague, the Majority Chief, for presenting the report on behalf of all of us, especially the first Mr. Speaker, who is the leader of the delegation. Mr. Speaker, as you may know, the Pan-African Parliament sits in Midran, and usually we we'll have two sessions that are in May and October, and also two committee meetings that are in March and August each year. And the Speaker, like the details of the report have captured, all the issues that have been dealt with during the October session 2022. And Mr. Speaker, the most important one for me is as captured on paragraph 8.0, the high level of dialogue on unconstitutional changes of government. And Mr. Speaker, the reason why this is very important is that all of us in Africa were of the firm belief that the time has come for overthrow of governments to be over. But unfortunately, in the last few years, a seemingly ugly head is emerging again. And West Africa is the one that is most affected. Where there's this government overthrow in Mali, in Burkina Faso, and Guinea, Conakry. As a speaker, for us in the African continent, we need to do self introspection to ask ourselves, why are the coup makers coming back again? And I will say, this is largely because of the failure of our democratic systems. Well, the Speaker, like many of us will attest to the fact that even Ghana, where we are praised across the continent, for having been able to hold to democratic principles and values, and have been able to have several elections since 1992 with several change of governments without any
problem will openly admit that the dividend of democracy is not really being felt by the ordinary citizens of Africa. And for us in the political arena, if we don't concern ourselves with this, that democracy is not just about election and electing leaders, it is the about good governance that will tickle the dividend of democracy to the ordinary citizens is failing. And for countries that have gone through successful elections like Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, and many others, this is our next worry that the dividend of democratic elections are not being followed by the African ordinary citizens. The speaker, the African citizens continue to find it very difficult to move around. They continue to find it very difficult to do business with each other. They continue to find it very difficult to do many, many, many of the things that confront the African continent 20 years ago. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge the Parliament of Ghana that in all that we do, we should remember that democracy is not just about election. It's not just about electing leaders, but it's about having good governance and making sure that the dividend of democratic values descend and the citizens fail it. If we fail to do this, I'm sorry to say, as well as all of us who curse who make us and never will want a coup to happen in our individual countries, it may be inevitable. Just as we've seen in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Guinea, Guinea Conakry, and in West Africa, and then in Sudan, um, and many other parts of uh, uh, East Africa, and other parts of Africa. We need to take this thing very seriously. And Mr. Speaker, I want to commend our head of delegation. I've not seen much of the ECOWAS uh, report that Pan-African Parliament consistently have been submitting its report on the activities of the Pan-African Parliament, which is a continental parliament that is doing everything that it can to unite the people of Africa. Mr. Speaker, with this comment, I want members to support the report and adopt it as the report, as a true reflection of what happened during these sessions in October. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Yes. Honorable Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to comment on the report on the first ordinary session of the safe parliament of the Pan-African Parliament. Mr. Speaker, the Pan-African Parliament takes its root from our collective decision to see Africa as a union and to fight for a situation where Africa can present itself to the world as one continent with the same determination to live worthy lives. And so, Mr. Speaker, it has taken its roots from the AU Charter, which advocates for democracy and unity of Africa. I had been a member of Pan-African Parliament for some time, and I got to know exactly what Pan-African Parliament is. Unfortunately, I got dissatisfied along the line when I realized that we had no particular responsibility of making any laws at all, and that we would only, uh, in most instances, endorse statements made by the AU and perform adversary roles. Mr. Speaker, but this report is showing uh, some level of confidence that things are happening. I've read the disconcertment of the Pan-African Parliament on the unconstitutional takeover of governments in, most, in some parts of Africa to the point that democracy is derailed and the people are the ones who eventually would suffer. Mr. Speaker, it is important that we reflect the true content of what we want to happen in Africa, the free choice of our African people, our determination to live a life because we give rights to our people to choose us to be and not to have leaders superintend and superimpose themselves over the will of the people. And so the dissatisfaction expressed in the report 
is worthy of commendation. And I particularly also notice the peer review mechanism aspect that has been um, outlined in the report. It is important that Africans should take particular charge of themselves. They should take ultimate responsibility of what we do with our lives. And it is important also that we allow our peers to review what we do on our democracy, on our economy, on our governance, on how we approach life in general. If we fail in this direction, it is where you have these international bodies coming in to determine what Africa has done wrong and what we should not do wrong, right, or what we have done and not right and all that. And it's often a defeat on our essence. And so the peer review mechanism is very important and uh, it's important that we support them and give them um, all the support that we require for our leaders, our representatives to go and be able to advocate Ghana's position very strongly. The speaker, the, but another issue that I notice in the report is the um, report on the Finance Committee. Fortunately, I understand the chairman is um, from Ghana, and I suppose is Honorable Mutaka. And it is important that um, we go deeper into the finances of the Pan-African Parliament. One of the, discontent, the, 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 the discontenting thing about it is that the major funding of the Pan-African Parliament is not necessarily from Africa itself. A lot of the funding will come from Europe to support Africans to manage their own parliament. I, and I think that it is not good news for us. I, I think that we would the major funding, and if any external funding is coming, it should be a very minute aspect of what we do. It calls for complete commitment to our democracy, complete commitment to our parliament, and also a caution to members to make sure they pay their dues so that we can have freedom from finances, you know, freedom, economic freedom. The beginning of it is our ability to take care of ourselves. If our AU center is built by, by, by an external somebody, uh, by China, as a donation to us, then you go to the parliament, you have EU supporting much of our pro a lot of our programs. It's not good news for us. And, and I think that um, maybe Ghana should take the lead in championing the advocacy of bringing Africans together, getting us to think through what we can do to fortify the strength of the Pan-African Parliament, to stand on its own and, and, and be able to take decisions and go beyond being an, adv an advisory body to fundamentally make laws as done by the European Union. The speaker, with these few words, I want to thank you. And thank, thank you very uh, much. Members. Thank you. Honorable members, at the conclusion of the debate, the question is, as many as are in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. All those against say no. Honorable members, the ayes have it. The motion is hereby Adopted. Honourable members, I believe we will suspend the House. The Speaker, um, we have been some uh, discussions, and so let us suspend the sitting for one hour. When we come back, you saw that we presented the report on the Committee of the Whole. The first thing that we deal with will be the report on the Committee of the Whole. As the Speaker, subsequent to that, we will deal with the other revenue bills. So, as the Speaker, that's where, that's where we are. One hour, and then when we come back, to deal immediately thereafter with the report of the Committee of the Whole, and then thereafter, the revenue bills. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Very well. Honourable members. Mr. Speaker, I, I just want to confirm the position of the minority, uh, majority leader that we've agreed.
to take the report of the Committee of the Whole before we proceed to the other businesses on the floor. So, Speaker, I think it's right that we suspend for one hour to warm up for, 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 the, for the remainder of the day. Thank you. Very well. Yes, Honorable Member Faswansi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, not to contradict what the leaders are saying, if it is one hour, then we'd rather play that it is one and a half hours so that the Muslim can break our fast before we come back. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I think it's only reasonable. It's only reasonable. So one and a half hours, and then we'll come back. It's 4.30 now. So are we coming back at 6 o'clock? Or maybe it's 6.15. 6.15. The Honorable are you saying 6.30? Your, your fast is very light. That one I know. So whether 6.15 or 6.30 or 7, it will add value to your, your fast is very light. Just because, so if people are saying 6.30, I guess they shouldn't attract any... any the time is 4.40. So 6.30, 6.30. then Dennis, we are spending about almost two hours. Yes, we are, our colleagues are saying that they want to break their fast. That's what I'm saying, that it's a reasonable request. So let's grant it, let's grant it, and then so, we'll do it. Very well. I, I just want to say Muslim. Are you a Muslim? Who <laughs> friend are you Who friend are you Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have read two obituaries in this house today. And we have seen the, lead, the speakers behave like WWE, tag team. You have swapped with second deputy, first deputy. We have been sitting here. No deputies. If we are, no deputies. <laughs> if we are breaking and coming back no, no, at 6.30, let it be 6.30, now. because we don't want to close at 12 midnight. So we beg you, 6.30 should well. be 6.30. Very well. well. Honorable members, the House is accordingly suspended up to 6.30. 6.30 on the dot, we are here. The House is suspended.